Let us pray. Gracious God, I ask now that you would sharpen me. God, use me like your own pencil. Have me to write what you would have your people to, lead, to read. God, I ask that you would remove the pressure to perform and allow me to speak clearly, bo boldly, and with power and conviction that something that I say may heal someone or give someone hope in their situation. God, I'm trusting you to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, for a moment of your time today, um, I'll be reading um, from Matthew, the 21st chapter, starting at the 8th verse. <clears throat> and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? For a moment of your time today, I would like to preach from the thought, Where are your roots wrapped? My brothers and sisters, I am a product of two parents who went to HBCUs. My mother went to Allen University in Columbia, South Carolina. My father, South Carolina State University in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And now myself, I'm a student at Morehouse College, another HBCU. Mm -hmm. Being the product of HBCUs and growing up around HBCUs all my life, I can remember being most excited around the last week of October. Anybody that goes to HBCUs or has been to an HBCU knows that that time of the year is called homecoming. Yeah. And at an HBCU, it's a week-long celebrate, as we like to call it at, at AUC. So I can always remember being a little kid and going with my dad to his alma mater, South Carolina State, and we would always get there early in the morning on Saturday morning so we could catch the parade. A couple of times I even had the privilege of being in the parade. Now, the parade was something as a spectacle. They had bands from all over the nations come playing in the parade. They had uh, what I thought at the time were the most beautiful girls in the world marching through the parade. The cheerleaders were there. The, the dancers were there. And I was convinced at that time that I would go to an HBCU just because I love parades so much. So, my brothers and sisters, it is no secret that we now find ourselves in the text dealing with another parade. This one is a peculiar parade. It's not the Macy's Parade. It's not the Rose Bowl Parade. And it's not a parade for an HBCU homecoming. But it's an, a parade of a sign of a terrible thing to come. When I looked at the text, I raised the question as to how Jesus could be willing to go into the city knowing what was ahead of him. My brothers and sisters, I was concerned that Jesus, even though he knew he would be killed, still found it uh, necessary to participate as the Grand Marshal in his own parade. <clears throat> Just before Jesus and the disciples make their way into Jerusalem, he's predicted his death for the third time, knowing that by the end of this homecoming week, he'll no longer be here. And I asked Jesus the question, I said, why would you go anyway? You had the power to go anywhere else. You could do anything you wanted to. You could change the situation that was going on around you. Why did you continue to move towards Jerusalem? And very simply, I heard a response through the text saying that, Ricky, I had to go to the city in order to go through the city. Mm -hmm. Yes, I knew there were some obstacles in front of me that were in Jerusalem, and I knew there was a temple, and I knew that I'd be questioned, and I knew I'd face an unjust judge, but if I never faced any of these things, I wouldn't be able to defeat them. Mm -hmm. wow. Many of us would rather run from the Jerusalems of our lives yeah, right. mm -hmm. than to deal with them head on. We run from anything that seems to have the ability to defeat us. Yeah. If you don't face depression, you can't fight it. Mm -hmm. If you don't come across fake friends, you won't know how to choose good ones. Yeah. If you don't have an interview with some feelings of incompleteness and insufficiency, you'll never know how you can be made complete. Yeah. He went on knowing that even though he would have a rendezvous with a, with a rigorous ridicule, he could still defeat it because he faced it. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, very simply, the, the next thing I... I had to understand about this parade was that uh, when I would go to parades as a young child, the floats would come by and they would throw candy off the floats. Mm -hmm. And I would run to the edge of the street and I would grab as much candy as I could and I'd run back to my parents and the next float would come by and I'd do the same thing over and over and over again. But it was interesting to me at this parade that the people on the floats or Jesus leading the parade wasn't the one throwing stuff out, mm -hmm. but it was the people on the sides laying the streets with palm leaves. My brothers and sisters, I, I 
uh, grew up in the state of South Carolina, and going to the coast of South Carolina, there are a lot of what we call palmetto trees. The interesting thing about palmetto trees and palm trees is that they're able to withstand some of the strongest winds in the world. They're very strong, and my brothers and sisters, I decided to do some research. I said, well, maybe it was a coincidence that they were throwing these palm trees, these palm leaves. No, it couldn't have been a coincidence. They had fig leaves they could have thrown, but they deliberately chose palm leaves. Why would they choose palm leaves? And I, as I did my research, I found a couple of things about palm, le palm trees and why they're able to withstand such strong winds. You see, when hurricanes come, palm trees, uh, they do something unique. They, they stabilize their trunk by letting go of the leaves. And when, when, when this happens, the, 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 uh, the palm trees, they stabilize themselves by letting go of some of the leaves. So I've learned that in life, sometimes you have to let go of some of the leaves in order to sustain the trunk. You have to let go of some of the people that were hurting you to sustain the trunk. Yeah. You have to let go of some of the things people said about you to sustain the trunk. You have to let go of some of those things that you weren't able to do to sustain the trunk. Some of those feelings of incompleteness and insufficiency. Some of those things you have to let go just to sustain your trunk. But the interesting thing to me about palm trees is not so much that they shed leaves in order to sustain the trunk, but it's that when palm trees are planted, they do something special with the roots. The roots of a palm tree go as deep as they can. They keep going and going and going until they go as deep as they can in the earth. And when they get as deep as they can, they find the closest rock. And the roots of a palm tree then begin to wrap around the rock. And so when a hurricane comes, the palm tree doesn't worry about whether or not it'll be able to withstand the hurricane and the winds and the rains because it realizes that its roots are wrapped around the rock. My brothers and sisters, if my grandmama was here, she'd say, though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, the hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease and if the winds just keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you today to make sure you have your roots wrapped around the rock.